delighted to introduce Elizabeth Ann McAnally, who is here to give a presentation called Loving Water. She recently defended her dissertation on Loving Water, and we all love her. Oh. <laughs> okay. Cool. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Thank you for coming. And I just wanted to share some of my favorite water places with you all. And so they're just going to be scrolling through. And as these photos appear, I just want you to sit with whatever comes up. Okay. So this title, this, this talk is called Loving Water. And, and I mean it in a twofold way. You know, we can learn how to love water and we can learn how to see water as loving water as a being who is love, okay? Mary Oliver, she's one of my favorite poets, and in my, my absolute favorite line from her is from her poem, Spring. She says, there is only one question, how to love this world, okay? There's only one question, how to love this world. And I feel that this can be a mantra for us today. This can, be, this can be a refrain, a chorus of the great work. As Thomas Berry says, our great work is to shift from having a destructive attitude toward all of our relations into an attitude that cultivates mutually enhancing relationships between humans and all members of our Earth community. He says this a different way. He says that it's important for us at this moment in history to see the universe not as a collection of objects, but as a communion of subjects. There's only one question. How to love this world? How to be in communion with all members of our Earth community. And the approach that I've been taking for the last uh, while, a long time, I guess, um, has been an approach that looks at water as a portal for how to, how to have a deeper relationship with all beings, okay? So these are some of my favorite bodies of water. You might recognize some of them. There's some from the, the Berkeley Marina, which is my absolute favorite place in the Bay Area. Also Esalen, another, another wonderful place. Um, Humboldt, Redwood State Park, um, Pacifica. There's also some photos from uh, Chautauqua, New York, and from India with um, the Ganges River and the Yamuna River. And and as these images come up, I want you to, to feel into how, like what is your relationship to water like? And how can it be deeper, more intimate, more loving, more compassionate, more respectful? I feel that if we can learn how to ask these questions and to learn to not take water for granted, but instead to see water as a sacred source of life, that this can transform our, our whole being and our whole, our whole collective consciousness so that we can learn how to be in, in right relationship with, with others, with other human beings, taking care of those who are the most vulnerable, who are marginalized, whose voices are neglected, and also the more than human world, as David Abram says, how can, we, how can we learn to love plants and animals, whole ecosystems, our whole earth? How can we learn to love Gaia? Some people like, like Stephen Harding and Lynn Margulis, they say, instead of saying Gaia, we should say water Gaia, okay? Because our earth is mostly water, at least the surface of the earth. You know, there's about 71% of the surface of the earth is water. We're saturated with water. Water makes up places. 
You know, every place is part of a watershed. And we humans are part of our watersheds. You know, our human body, whenever we come into the world, we're, we're born out of this oceanic amniotic fluid. And as infants, we have about 75% of our, our body weight is water. And as we grow older, the elderly, we have about 55% water. And so we're, as we grow, we dehydrate. And so it's even more important to, to continue to replenish our bodies with water. And as we replenish our bodies with water, we have the opportunity to, to drench our consciousness and our conscience. We have the opportunity to cultivate a heart mind that loves water. And my, my main argument is this, that if we can learn how to love one particular body of water, then we can learn how to expand that love to encompass all beings. Okay. If you learn how to, to go about your day-to-day -day life becoming more aware of every time that you drink water, every time that you bathe, shower, every time that, that you flow in whatever ways, whenever you, you walk by water, if you can open your eyes to see the beauty of the world, even when it's polluted, even when it's immensely suffering, if you can learn to be with that suffering and open your heart, then this can, can transform your life. And so I invite you to, to think about ways that you might be able to, to do that kind of thing. And you might say, well, water is not my thing. You know, it's like, I'm more, I'm more into earth, or I'm more, I'm not into the elements. I really, I love dogs, or I love to think about math, or whatever, whatever your passion is. I say, well, connect that with water. You can imagine, like, like there is this um, pool or lake, still water. And then you take whatever, whatever that you love the most, and with that in your heart, you look at water, and you see your passion reflected and amplified. You see clear, or you see in new ways. You might see how whatever it is that you're most passionate about, if you, if you see it in relationship to water, it might, it might help you to have a whole new perspective on whatever it is that you care most about. And so by, by linking up our, our, our ultimate concern, how about that? How about by linking up whatever your faith is in whatever kind of god or goddess or, or the, the whole universe, whatever it is that you, that you trust, if you can see how water flows through that, and helps to connect that thing that you care so much about with all beings, then that can really help you shift. That can help to, to help you see how you are not some separate individual self that exists apart from others that you can shut off from, but you can learn how to see that your pores are porous that your sense of identity is completely intertwined. And so by learning how to be with, be with like whatever it is that you're feeling, even whenever it really hurts, whenever you feel like, whenever you, especially suffering, if you can learn how to be with the suffering that you're feeling in relation to the suffering of others, you can realize that you're not alone in that. And water can help us, you know, the tears of compassion. Tara, green Tara and white Tara are born from the tears of Avalokiteshvara in some myths. They are bodhisattvas. And Thich Nhat Hanh says that not just Tara is a bodhisattva, all water, all water is a bodhisattva. All water flows and nourishes others. 
And so if we can learn how to see water as a bodhisattva, as a compassionate being who vows to become enlightened, to, to work for the benefit of others, to help liberate others from suffering, if we can learn how to see that water in all the different forms is a bodhisattva, then, then that can be one of our guides in our great work, you know? And so in my dissertation, I, I write about um, seeing water not only as a bodhisattva, but as an aqua sattva. Okay. And, and we as humans can learn how to, to sink in to, to the capacity that we have as aqua sattvas, as humans reflecting on water, as humans who have the ability to be compassionate and to open our hearts and to hold the suffering of others. Water can teach us how to, how to become more of who we want to be in our great work, how to become more compassionate, loving, respectful, caring members of our earth community. And so with every, with every, <coughs> every time that you interact with water, you can ask, how can I be of service? How can I learn to, to flow freely for the benefit of all beings? How can I learn to be like you, water? And, and so whenever, whenever you go throughout your day, I invite you to do that. And I think that's about all the time that I have, but we have a few minutes for questions or comments. And so if you feel like sharing anything or asking any questions, um, we have a few minutes for that. Stephen? In, in <coughs> your presentation, you also mentioned that she has three phases liquid, solid, and gas. Yeah. Can you say something about how can what you invoke and beckon to us to participate in also be done in her icy phases yeah. and, and vapor phases? Well, um, like how can we have a more loving relationship to, to snow and ice and steam and... Yeah. Yeah. Well... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I do think that, that the liquid form of water is more privileged, um, especially because it's the most common form. Like with the ocean, 98% of the water on Earth is ocean water. And, and so... Um, but yeah, if, if we have um, certain water activities that involve steam or ice or snow, like say if we love to go um, snowboarding or skiing or, or, or any kind of uh, steam baths, um, like, like participating in those kinds of activities in a more mindful way can, can invoke feelings of um, uh, connection and feelings of of intimacy and care. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I'm enjoying uh, yeah, we're enjoying a little synchronicity. I mean, it's not one of those knockout synchronicities, but it's kind of a nice one. Uh, so about an hour ago, I was reading a chapter on Sophia and Dante, mm -hmm. and he's relating uh, Beatrice to uh, Sophia and to many, many metaphors that seem to me uh, uh, liquid. Yeah. All right. So on the way here, I was thinking, I wonder if <laughs> Elizabeth will say something about water and Sophia. And there came, um, you know, your reference to Thich Nhat Hanh. Would you like to say, more? does he say more about why is water a, a bodhisattva? What, uh, is earth, is sky, is sun yep. and moon? Are right. they all, all, the, yeah. all the elements in the yeah. St. Francis's canticle, they're all bodhisattvas? Right. Well, he, he explicitly says water and earth. <coughs> and he, I haven't found Thich talking about other elements or other, other um, beings in nature as bodhisattvas. Um, but he does say that every being in the universe is an ambassador of, of the universe. So in that way, like any, any kind of being can help you to, to come to know and appreciate and love the whole. Um, but in, 
in particular, he says that, um, that the earth, like every step that we take on the, on the earth, if we can do that in a way that sees earth as nourishing and compassionate, that would make each step become more mindful, hopefully. Um, and by doing that, you know, you can, it's like a meditation practice with every single step of the day. Um, okay, I'm going to make another comment. Uh, I, I haven't been able to comment because I haven't been able to hear the lectures until yours. So, um, uh, I mean, because I, I should tell people I lost my hearing aid. So if you try to talk to me and I don't hear you, that's the trouble. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so for about 20 years, I took hundreds of photographs, many, many of water. And I think there's probably not one that doesn't include water and sun. And I, there's not one of your photographs that has the play of water and sun. Are you aware of that? Well, I have. I do have some. I do have some sunsets. I didn't into the, were there? The, maybe they haven't. Maybe they haven't come up yet. I kind of. I haven't seen them yet. Yeah, but yeah, I, I do love that that combination. That okay. the, the reflection, especially in a like pool, to okay. see that beautiful crystal. Okay, I'm going to make another comment. I said I have this. I'm really excited. Okay. <laughs> I'm enjoying this, having my <laughs> microphone. <laughs> okay, and this is not so much for you, but it's for other people. Uh, but it's about you, and namely that it's a, you're a great recommendation for either Tai Chi or something, because unlike some people who don't move their hands at all, or other people who use their hands in a way that doesn't express their thinking and their words and their emotion, you, yours, I mean, I was hardly looking at the photographs, I was so busy watching your hands and they were so expressive. And I hope that other people will see that and imitate it. It's extremely important to use hands in a way that, that carries the message, which you did. It's, it's really quite, it's quite a treat. Thank you. Thank you. So maybe we have time for one more comment, and then we should move on. Thank you. I love water too. Yeah. And I was wondering if you attribute any special significance to when our relationship with water involves some kind of ritual activity, like making water sacred or using it for cleansing in a ritual, or that really just sitting near water and looking at it lovingly is enough. I think I think I think anything is enough, and we can always do more and more to have a more like a more sacred relationship with water. So I think if we can turn every practice into a ritual or into an experiment of becoming more loving or more uh, reverential, um, then, then that can really help, help our practice and our, and our relationship with others to, to really flourish. Yeah, cool. So I think that's about all the time. So thank you so much.